Um, so my name is Andrew Mister. <laughs> For those of you who this is your first Ridiculum Comedy Show, that means I am Mr. Mister. <laughs> and I promised them that that joke would work on a new audience. So let's try that again. <laughs> my name is Mr. Mister. <laughs> See, if you make them laugh, they will. Um, it's, it's a terrible curse to grow up with something as dumb as that. Um, you know, the best way I can equate going through something like that is when you go to a restaurant with your dad and on the menu is mahi-mahi with couscous. Because, like, you can already see the waiter coming and your dad scheming. The waiter gets to the table and he's like, hi, I don't need to hear the specials. I would like the mahi-mahi with the couscous and the side of broccoli broccoli. <laughs> it never ends well. Um, so, uh, I was talking with my friend recently, and she was telling me, she was really excited, she was like, Andrew, I met this new guy. He brought me Chick-fil-A. He knew exactly what I wanted. And I was like, Chick-fil-A only sells chicken. <laughs> And she's like, no, 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 you don't understand. He brought me Chick-fil-A. And I was like, the wise men brought Jesus literal gold. <laughs> they weren't returning characters. <laughs> but I was like, okay, maybe this is like code for like, you know, things that people do. So I was like, okay, I'll try that. And so I went up to uh, a woman and I was like, hey, uh, if you come back to my place, I have Chick-fil-A. And she's like, no thanks, homophobe. <laughs> Speaking of homophobia, religion. <laughs> <laughs> um, I grew up in a Catholic household. Um, I am a senior at Villanova, and after doing stand-up here for a long time, I promised everyone that I would eventually get to Catholicism. Yes! This is going to be me eventually getting to Catholicism. So, um, I, have, I have a big issue uh, um, with kind of Catholicism and Christianity, uh, and it's called Veggie Tales. <laughs> see, see, Veggie Tales is to the Bible as like Family Guys to pop culture, um, and the thing that upsets me the most is that it is Tales of Vegetables with their leading role as a tomato. A tomato is a fruit, <laughs> and you might think, oh, surely that was just a mistake that the Catholic Church made. As if that's not something they've done before. <laughs> and I, I, it's like, it's one of those little things for me where it's like, those are just the little things that take me off, you know? Like another one, priests, they go to school for eight years. There's one textbook. <laughs> and you can steal it from a hotel room whenever you want. They don't have to pay for that. You know, they spend eight years learning to mansplain a book to you on the weekends. <laughs> the last time I had to explain what I just read to someone on the weekend was the SAT. <laughs> and I bombed that shit. <laughs> um, and I just started to think at some point, maybe we should pay a little more attention to what we're reading, because not everything in there, you know, we still agree with today. Even the church doesn't like everything. They're not a big fan of astrology. And yet, the pinnacle moment is when three dudes that they call wise looked at the sky and said, Hey, we should bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh to whatever's under that thing. <laughs> and now I'm starting to wonder, at this point in time, if the MLA handbook has ten editions, maybe it's time to look at the Bible and say, it's your turn. <laughs> um, in, in, in telling these jokes, I like there's like a weight on me um, because I was raised Catholic. Um, I have a Catholic guilt about me. And for those of you who aren't raised in it, the best way to describe it is you know you do things out of the good of your heart and guilt in your soul. <laughs> you know, if you feel bad about yourself, it's working. <laughs> you know, and the, the example I would give is with grace, and I already I already have issues with grace. Um, but like, it's, you say before a meal, you know, bless bless the food, it's, it's good, it's holy now, and it's like, I feel like if I were to forget to say grace, and I were to get food poisoning, that it's not because 
I didn't say grace. But the church would look at me and be like, well, you forgot to say grace. <laughs> and it's a bit patronizing to me, for me to like, you know, say to God, like, hey God, thank you for this DiGiorno pizza. <laughs> but I'm gonna go home and make a DiGiorno pizza tonight, and if my microwave explodes, the church would be like, well, you didn't tell jokes about Christianity. <laughs> um, the, uh, the last thing I'll, I'll talk about this, uh, um, in high school, um, I was, I was trying to pull. Did you say it? So I went up to, I went up to a girl. <laughs> and I was like, hey, uh, I'm a drummer in a band. And she's like, oh, what band? I was like, oh, my church is youth band. <laughs> and she's like, I don't think I've heard of them. What genre are they? And I was like, oh, homophobic. <laughs> Um, yeah, I did that. I did that for a long time, and I'd always see these advertisements for youth group. It'd be you know, someone, some high school would get up in front of the congregation after after like reading comprehension time, and and she'd be like, "Hi guys, tonight we're having pizza, making DIY chastity belts, talking about abortion, and playing dodgeball." <laughs> You know, because nothing says Jesus loves you like pegging a 15-year-old with a dodgeball. What, ha what happened in the back there? So finally, I was like, I'm going to go to this youth group thing. And I walk in the door, and this kid greets me, and the first thing he says to me is, did you know the Pope died of infection on his penis? And I was like, maybe this youth group thing isn't that bad. <laughs> and that's a real thing that happened. There was once a pope who had syphilis. And you might see a problem with that. <laughs> and, you know, because, you know, we're teenage guys, you know, someone heard the word penis and started laughing at that. And the guy walks over to them. We are in the church, and he slaps them on the face. And I looked at him, and I was like, hey, man, save up for dodgeball. <laughs> That's, that's, that's enough of, of me talking about religion. I feel like I need to go like, help a grandma across the street now tomorrow. I feel like to like, undo this, I'm going to have to like, go to confession and be like, bless me, Father. I'm a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm an engineer, so I want to talk a little bit about science stuff. Um, so one of these big questions, you know, when you, when you deal with science, um, I've come to reason with is, um, if matter or energy can't be destroyed, where does your virginity go? <laughs> we, had a, we had a whole English language and we were like, we you lost your virginity. Like if my friend came up to me and was like, hey man, I lost my virginity, I'd be like, well did you check under the couch cushions? <laughs> There's a whole English language. And then I start to realize we don't have a lot of great options because like, you know, well it can be kind of like a gift because you know, you can't return it. You know, there's a whole like re-gifting issue there of like virgin has sex with a non-virgin, like transfer property, and they know they're not. And, then, and if you're carrying ones, it's too complicated. And then I was like, okay, well, like, what if it's like overcome your virginity? But then I was like, well, only the guy overcomes, so. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, I want to talk about. I want to talk a little bit about my family here. Um, I, I really made a, I made a bold stance over the summer. I, I really tried, guys. I tried to explain to my mom what a DJ is. <laughs> oh, I tried so hard. She's like, they're the ones that spin the records. And I was like, well, not anymore. They write the songs. And she's like, well, I don't hear Avicii in the song. I was like, oh, no, 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 Avicii's not singing. He wrote the song. And she's like, but his name's on it. I'm like, mom, he didn't write the song. And she's like, well, where is he? I'm like, he's dead, okay? He died. We can't talk to him anymore. I don't know what happened. Um, and then I went to my dad and was like, well, let's have a bigger challenge. Let's see if my dad understands pronouns. <laughs> and to his credit, he is very good about that. Because I'll go up to him and I'll be like, hey, oh, uh, her and I. And he'll be like, oh, uh, hold on a second. You meant she and I. You switched the subject and the object pronoun. It's a class misconception. And I was like, oh, thanks, dad. She and I are pregnant. <laughs> um, as I'm also going home, uh, there's a Lululemon near me, um, and every time I walk by it, um, Lululemon, you know, like what's coming next? Uh, someone got stabbed in that Lululemon. <laughs> Bethesda! Oh, yeah! Oh, shit! Yeah! Yeah! And every time I walk by that Lululemon, like, I know that that's the one, and I'm like, damn! 
their ass must have looked so good when they died. <laughs> right? Like, that's a selling point. Like, a butt so good, heaven couldn't say no. <laughs> Unless you're a comedian. <laughs> Lulu let me in. <laughs> um, so, I'll, 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 close, I'll close with one more story I want to tell you guys. Um, so, this past summer, uh, it was the first time ever, uh, I was thrown out of a liquor store. I'm 22. <laughs> I wasn't buying anything. This was a bottle buy in Long Island, love alliteration. Um, and I go in there with my friend, uh, and as we're checking out, um, they're like, hey, we need to see your ID too. I was like, oh, okay. So I show them my ID, and they shouldn't even have to scan it to know it's real because I'm in New York and presenting them a Maryland ID. No one is pretending to be from Maryland. <laughs> and they're like, okay, cool. Well, we also need uh, to see your credit card. And it was really cool to see Duo Two Factor Authentication out in the wild. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, I don't have my credit card, but like, if you should show me some pictures, I'll point at the stop signs. <laughs> and they went about that. They're like, we really need your credit card. I have one on me. And I was like, are they trying to steal my identity? <laughs> Did they see that my last name's Mister on the card? Like my stand-up career could finally take off if only I commit fucking like identity theft. <laughs> so that's not working, and I was like, okay, well, I'm not buying anything. And now the manager's walking over, and the manager's like, what's going on here? And I was like, hi, like they see my ID, but they need a second form of identity, and they won't call my mommy. <laughs> and she wasn't having that. And so I was like, oh, wait, actually, I also have my college ID, because, you know, on your wild card, it has your birthday. And I show it to them, and they're like, mm, there's a lot of colleges around here. And I was like, how long is this island? <laughs> so that doesn't work. And I look at, them, like, at the manager, and I'm like, hey, I'm not buying anything. I can just leave. And she goes, that ship has sailed, buddy. <laughs> and that's when I realized I was getting kidnapped in a Long Island bottle pie. <laughs> And so at this point then, I'm like, okay, we don't, like, we don't need to do this. We'll find any way to leave the store. So eventually, we get to walk out of the door, balls in hand, no alcohol. <laughs> and my friend looks at me, and she's like, I want to try something real quick. So she goes back in on her own, and a few minutes later, she comes back out, alcohol in hand, five stars from GTA over her head. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, that's fucked up. I want to get back at them. And I realized the best way to get back up Long Island Bottle Buy would be to leave a shit in front of their door because they'll never be able to identify it. That shit doesn't have a credit card. <laughs> and in conclusion, I'm not proud about what I'm about to say. But uh, the moral of this story is um, that uh, when, when, when we do a climate change, I'll be saying so long, island. <laughs> And that's what you have to end tonight on. Thank you so much for coming out.